Welcome to the Complete Leader Podcast, giving leaders the tools and information they need to grow and change their world. Now here's your host, Dale Dixon. The Complete Leader Podcast, everything you need to become a high-performing leader today, getting more done in less time. That should pique your curiosity just a little bit. Ron Price, good to be with you. It's good to be with you, Dale. So, um, I, you know what? This completely escaped me, but we have been doing this podcast for more than five years. The actual five-year anniversary escaped me, but we started February 16th of 2016, which is gone like that. Hard to believe. It's pretty amazing. And uh, as you know, we started it because we wanted to help leaders think about what it means to be a leader. And we wanted to give them a steady diet of things that would help them keep growing. I'm convinced that a big part of the joy and fulfillment of life is that you keep growing. You, you don't get to a certain point and then you're just trying to hold on, but you keep exploring new things. And I believe that that's true for leaders as well. Um, I, I remember Skip Hall, a mutual friend of ours, who has often told this story of Vince Lombardi who would start off the Green Bay Packers football season by saying, gentlemen, <clears throat> we are on a journey reaching for perfection, knowing that we will never achieve it, but that along the way we will find excellence. And I think that's a lot of what, what being a growing or really being what a complete leader is all about. I don't know that you ever can say that you are complete, but it's that vision that keeps you striving, that makes life a lot more enjoyable and makes you much more impactful to the people that you serve. And 142 episodes, that's that's a number of conversations that um, we've been, I consider myself very fortunate to have. Um, you reminded us Seinfeld was 180 episodes. We're almost there. Seinfeld always bragged that he was a show about nothing, but that's definitely not the case with the complete leader. So let's let's talk about what what is your aspiration what do you hope to accomplish with the podcast itself well dale i think i have to start by saying what do we hope to accomplish because you've been a part of this right from the get-go and you are a big advocate and a big encourager for us to begin to have these conversations and to get them recorded so um uh, the overarching purpose of it was to talk about leadership and everything that it entails and I didn't always feel that way. I, for a long time, leadership to me was just something you did in order to get other stuff done. And at some point, it, it was probably about 15 years ago, I began to realize that leadership has a great intrinsic value. It, it's a great to think about what it means to be a leader. And as you know, I believe everybody's a leader, e either through their character or through their expertise or through the roles that they have in organizations. But to strive to be a good leader, to be a growing leader, has a great dynamic that goes beyond just the position or the responsibility. It's a part of how we discover who we are and develop the best version of ourselves. So I think of leadership as a theme as being really um, the same thing as saying that a big part of our purpose is to discover and pursue our greatest potential. And as we've gone through these conversations together, something that keeps coming back to me over and over again is how many different kinds of leaders there are. And it's not just about what your title is. It's about how you have the opportunity to serve and impact others. And in the process of doing that, discover more of who you are and who you can be. So um, in 2016, when we first started this, I think actually it was February of 2016, the first time that we sat down and and recorded, at least it was the first time that we published one of our podcasts. Um, I, I wanted to use it as a platform for other people who were contributing to our thinking about leadership. In those early days, it's hard to remember looking back, but I, I think that first year I was a guest maybe three times or four times at the most. Most of the time I was asking you to interview other thought leaders that I respected and I felt that they had something valuable to share. And of course, you've always been in it right from the get-go. So I guess you could say this is more your podcast than mine. But you sat me down at the end of 2017. I don't know if you remember it, but we were down in Scottsdale together. It was the beginning of 2018, I think. And you said, you know, Ron, um, 
you need to be a part of this podcast. We need to hear a lot more from you. And I gave it some thought and felt that you were correct. And so our first podcast where it was sort of a remake of it, where it was going to be more the two of us talking, happened in April of 2017. That's when it was released. And then uh, for the next couple of years, we focused on the 25 skills that are in the Complete Leader book and that we have additional resources for on the Complete Leader website. So sometimes we would spend one or two or three conversations talking about one of those skills like self-management or personal accountability. And other times we would have one and then we'd go on to the next skill. But we, we spent quite a bit of time talking through those 25 skills that are in the book. We did lots of cherished conversations and rarely a week goes by that somebody doesn't reach out to me and with a thank you email, some level of appreciation for one of the conversations. So um, love to have that impact for our listeners who go back and look at dates associated with podcast releases. They see this gap uh, from June 2020 to March 2021. And there are definitely some obvious reasons that a podcast would take a break during that time. But but let's talk about the time away and, and, and some of what was going on in the background for you. Yeah. And actually, um, because there's a difference between when we record a conversation and when it gets published, I think we stopped having these conversations in March 2020, which was the onset of the pandemic. And at first, I think we were just wondering, what is happening? What are we going to do? And I, for myself, needed some time to cocoon. I needed some time to think about what the future looks like. At that point, I didn't know what was going to happen to the work that we do, um, as many people had questions. And then after that, I felt like um, I, I don't. I love publishing. I think publishing in a podcast or a book or a blog, any of that is publishing. I love publishing because I think that you're putting something out there that you hope is going to help other people and it can go anywhere. You don't have any control over where it goes. But I also feel a certain stewardship that I don't want to publish junk. I don't want to publish just for the sake of publishing. I have to feel that I'm giving something to people that is beneficial to them. And I felt like I needed time. So we, we stopped recording in March of 2020 and we started again in January of 2021, even though, um, I guess it was late December of 2020, even though it didn't get released until I think April, March or April of 2021. And, and I needed that time to think about what we've already talked about. Are we just gonna keep re-saying the same things? Or are there new things that we want to talk about? And toward the end of the year, having spent more time than probably any time in my life in deep reflection, I felt that, yeah, there's some things I'd really like to share because I really believe that they can make a difference. So that's how we got started there. And um, uh, as a part of that, I also have felt more and more of a sense of responsibility for publishing, which means that I have to back off from a lot of the in-person executive coaching and team facilitation and strategy work that I do. And it's not to say, Dale, that I'm quitting that, but I'm being more selective in that kind of work so that I have more time for publishing. Actually, you could say what I'm aiming for is to be able to get more done in less time. <laughs> Perfect segue for our topic today. So let's talk about why, why this, why now? Why talk about getting more done in less time? Yeah, well, it, it's not a new topic, but I'd say that in the 17 years that I've been doing executive coaching and even much longer than that, working with leaders in more of a corporate role, I'd say 80 to 90% of the leaders that I work with feel that they've got too much to do. And they feel um, a little bit overwhelmed about how to go about getting it done. As a matter of fact, the research bears that out. There's research I've seen that says that about 87% of leaders in North America uh, feel overwhelmed by the amount that they have to do. There's maybe 6% that are neutral and 7% that think everything's great and they're getting everything done that they should. So the vast majority of us are looking for ways that we can get more done in less time. 
and to be able to be more engaged and get more joy from our day-to-day -day activities. So those are pretty stark numbers. 87% say that they're dissatisfied with, with what they're able to get accomplished. 6% 6, 6 neutral and 7% are really happy and engaged with day-to-day -day activities. So in your conversations with leaders, do you have some theories on why those numbers are where they are at from the research? I do. I think that there are three main reasons, and I may be missing something. There may be more, but the three reasons that seem to fit in almost every situation where I'm helping a leader are, first of all, um, the world that we live in is just so full of opportunities and distractions and demands, lots of noise. There, there's so much to choose from. There's so many requests of us. There, we just live in a very, very busy world around us. And with very few exceptions, we're all subject to those kinds of pressures. So I think that's the first reason. How do we manage that? The second is that many of us have our own inner battles. So we might feel obligated or guilty, or we may be overly optimistic. And we've talked about this when we've talked about conquering over commitment. And uh, for listeners who want to go back to that, it's episodes 130 and 131, where we discuss that. So that's the second reason is that stuff inside of us that causes us to take on too much and then end up frustrated because we've taken on too much. And then the third reason I think that we run into this um, desire to do better, to get more done in less time, is that a lot of the tools, the systems or the techniques that we might have used earlier in our career that worked reasonably well for us, they're, they're kind of worn out. We're living in a different time. I've just been, lately, I've really been going after my email big time because I got to a point where little by little by little, I had over 900 emails that were unopened. Now, what they actually had been open, but a large percentage of them had been open, and then I marked them as unread because I turned them into a task instead of an email. And I was using my email as a task list. Well, that just doesn't work anymore. So I've really been going after it. And uh, today, I'm hoping by the end of today that I have zero unopened emails in my inbox. But this morning, uh, after I got rid of a lot of the stuff that came through last night, I'm down to 23, from 900 to 23. Well, the way that I thought about managing my time 10 or 15 years ago doesn't work today. We have to come up with new systems. So I think that's the third reason. So the first reason is we live in a super busy world. Second is that we've got our own internal battles to conquer. And then third, we need new systems, new ways of thinking about how we get more done in less time. So prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. We've just uh, diagnosed our challenges in those three areas. If those are the causes, what is the prescription? What's the cure? Well, first of all, let's think about um, the first, uh, which is how, how do we deal with all the noise that's around us? I think it takes a lot of thinking and sorting and prioritizing. And then I think we, we need to think about what is most important to us, not what's most urgent. So we, we all, this is not a new challenge, but it's a heightened challenge, this battle between the urgent and the important. The urgent is something I feel like, boy, I got to get this done or I'm letting somebody down where I really care about getting this done. But when you think a year, two years, three years out, and you ask yourself the question, in three years, will I care whether or not I did this particular thing? A lot of times you say, you know, in three years, it won't matter. So that's an example of something that's urgent, but not necessarily important. When you think about defining something that's important, it's will I care in three years, but maybe I don't feel the need to do it today, but in three years, I'll really be glad that I did it. That's an example of something that's important. And of course, there are many things that we do that are both urgent and important, but there are things that are important but don't have that sense of urgency, so they tend to slide. And unfortunately, there are things that are urgent but don't have the importance and they tend to steal. And um, I think that that's part of that, the, the cure for the first part, which is that we live in a very busy world that's hitting us with all kinds of things, is we've got to be clear about where we want to be in the future and what it's going to take to get there. Then we need to get it documented um, down on paper or in our computer or some way that we can go back and refer to it regularly 
so that we don't get led astray by some people say shiny objects. Maybe it's not always shiny objects. Sometimes it's obligations that pull us away. So we, we need that razor sharp clarity to hold on to, to help us navigate through the noisy world that we're in. I think that's how we respond to the first challenge. And um, once you have that, if you can have some kind of accountability, maybe it's an accountability buddy or partner up here coach or an executive coach or somebody who helps ask you the questions, are you staying on track? We have a much greater chance of winning or maybe surfing the busy world instead of being uh, drowned by it. So three specific tools for that point. Number one, that I heard you go through. Number one, just that clarifying question. Will this really matter to determine if it's urgent or important? Will it matter in a year? Will it matter in three years? Uh, and then documentation so that we're, we can refer back. And I think just the act of writing something down helps us think through it as we contemplate, is this really important or is it just urgent right now because of some outside factors that I might not be considering? Yeah, and what helps me with it, Dale, is I think of it as being like a compass. Of course, most of us don't use compasses anymore unless we're way out in the wilderness. Most of us use all trails or some other kind of a mapping system. And when my wife and I go out hiking a new trail, it's really valuable to me to make sure that I'm staying on track and it will tell me if I'm getting off track. So it's a map or a comp it, 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 like a compass, but it's a map that shows us where we're at compared to what the plan was. And that's the benefit of the document and then tracking it as you go. And then, yeah, the third one, as you mentioned, is it's really how do you develop these habits of focus to remind us. And I think that whenever you can bring somebody else into helping you with questions they ask you or um, they care about your success and they're going to remind you of what your commitments are, that helps to elevate our potential for success. Let's talk about reason number two, those battles that we each have to win. Yes. Well, of course, we've talked about this quite a bit when we talked about um, both the combination of overcoming uh, or conquering over commitment and then developing resilience as well. Because sometimes we lose this battle of getting more done in less time because we just lose energy. So um, sometimes we struggle because we don't feel well. Maybe we get discouraged. Maybe uh, on the other end of the spectrum, maybe we have so much curiosity and optimism that we just keep pursuing new things all the time and, and getting off course. Sometimes it's that we have limited support. Sometimes to get more done in less time, it's not a solo activity. It's more of a team activity and we don't have that kind of understanding. We tend to think that it's my responsibility and we don't we don't go through the process of having other people involved in helping us and helping them at the same time. So it takes some pretty deep reflection and uh, oftentimes someone else to help us. And um, sometimes that someone else is as simple as a buddy or a, a friend that we can talk with. Sometimes it's some kind of a coach and uh, on occasion, it's a psychologist who can help us get underneath the surface and understand the nature of those internal battles. I will say this, conquering the internal obstacles is rarely a quick fix. Progress is usually made incrementally. So we've got to be patient. We have to avoid discouragement. We need to celebrate any progress and focus on the creation of new habits little by little. We have to be willing to see it as a marathon instead of as a sprint because the internal battles are some of the most difficult things to overcome, to change. And the cure for the internal battles is rare, rarely a straight line. It usually zigzags. You usually take a couple steps forward and a step backward. And sometimes you fall off the wagon, so to speak, for some time and you have to forgive yourself and get back and, and just say, you know what, this is a part of the journey of life. And the harder it is, the more joy there will be when I get there. So it, as long as we keep reminding ourselves that we can't change what's already happened, it's the past, but we can always create a better future. And if we can develop that kind of an attitude, it may take 
months or years or decades in some instances, but we can keep making progress. And this is where we have to appreciate and enjoy the progress we're making rather than think that we can only be happy once we've completely conquered the internal battles. As I have worked to engage in this, the deep reflection and, and those points that you've talked about, I am – it it takes significant intentionality. I like to say that nobody can lie to me like I can lie to me <laughs> about what's going on inside my head. So are, how do you address that? Well, th this is where I think somebody else helps you a lot because one of the greatest truth serums that you can take is having somebody else know what battles you're struggling with, understand them and be able to ask you questions from a, a not not from a point of view of criticizing or belittling you but from a point of view of of uh wanting to be a part of your success wanting to encourage and celebrate the steps that you're making and as you know Dale in a lot of our leadership development programs one of the key components that we deploy over and over again is what we call peer coaching where you create the questions of what you're around, what you're working on. And all you're doing is asking one of your friends to ask you those questions once a week. And they help you to get to know yourself better. They help you to recognize what's easy, what's hard, and they help you over time to make progress. It's like getting a trainer, but it's a trainer for getting more done in less time. Exactly, so important. We're not in this alone. Uh, reason number three, that we don't have the tools, the techniques, and the systems to support our desire to get more done. Yeah. How do we address this? Yeah, I, I, I don't know that this is necessarily harder than the first two, but this is much more complex. Uh, complexity implies that there's not just one tool or technique that's gonna solve all our problems. So this is something that we have to continually explore. And as we um, run into disappointments or obstacles, we have to ask ourselves, is there a different system or is there a way that I could rethink my system or my tools or techniques that would help me here? So we, we think about, I think when, when I think about systems and tools and techniques, I think first of all about what's the time frame that I'm focused on for getting more done in less time. So am I talking about getting more done in a day, getting more done in a week, Getting more done in a month or a year, well, for me, it's a month, a quarter, a year, three years, and 10 years. Those are all different time frames. Now, I, I will admit that earlier in my career, I didn't think about 10 years. I thought it was impossible to think about. But now, having had several decades of experience and realizing that I probably have less than a decade left in my work life, it's not at all that hard for me to look out further and to, to think about what's the vision for 10 years. Admittedly, the, the detail, the specifics of how you try to get more done in less time changes in each of those different time frames. The way you define it if you're looking out 10 years is very, very different in how you define it when you're looking at today. So the first thing is to think about our time frame and not to just have one time frame. What am I getting done today or what am I getting done this year? but to recognize that we have to have multiple views in order to get more done in less time. Second thing is to think about the nature of the work. Is the work that I'm involved in more task focused or more people focused? Because how you get more done in less time is different based on whether you're dealing with tasks or dealing with people. One of the things Stephen Covey said in his book, The Seven Habits, which always stuck with me, is he said, with people, slow is fast and fast is slow. Well, what he meant is you can't treat people like a task. You have to treat them like a human being, which means understanding them, understanding what's important to them, negotiating, listening, understanding, persuading, all of these things are how you get more done in less time. Whereas when you're talking about tasks, it might be planning and organizing, prioritizing, uh, creating your to-do list. It's totally different solutions based on the nature of the work that you're doing. Uh, another question to ask about the nature of the work is, is it independent or is it interdependent work? Independent work's very solitary. It's, it's a, if it's to be, it's up to me. 
But interdependent work, which is oftentimes the secret to getting more done in less time, takes a different mindset, a different set of skills, a different set of practices. One of the great examples of this is uh, in Agile uh, methodology. It's called the morning huddle. It's a 15-minute huddle where everyone says, this is what I got done yesterday, this is what I'm going to do today, and this is a problem I'm dealing with. And there's no problem solving. That's all they do during those 15 minutes standing up. But oftentimes that this is what I did yesterday, this is what I'm doing today, and this is a problem I'm facing creates conversations later where somebody says, I can help you with that. I faced that same thing and this is what I did or I'd like to help you because I'd like to learn as well. So there's a big difference between independent work and interdependent work. Another way that you think about framing it is um, thinking about what I want to get done and contrasting that with what is it that others want me to get done. Because sometimes the key to getting more done in less time is making sure you've got alignment between your expectations and your boss's expectations or somebody else, one of your peers or one of your uh, direct reports or one of your customers. So to get more done in less time, it's important that we take into consideration what the interests are of other stakeholders that care about us getting more done in less time. And then finally, we've already talked about the difference between the urgent and the important and how we deal with that. And um, what do you want to develop in relationship to the urgent versus the important? One of the reasons that I write down everything that I need to do and I prioritize it and I look at it daily is because I discovered years ago that I have an addiction to the urgent that I've still not gotten over. And what I mean by that is I, I have enough urgent things to do every day. They may be urgent and important, but I have enough of those to do every day that once the urgent things are off my list, I can't think of what to do. I'm so controlled by that sense of urgency that I need to go to a list that says, oh yeah, these are the things I should be working on that I don't feel urgency about right now, but I'll care about them later on. So that's another way that we have to think about um, what we're trying to accomplish and how that's going to impact the kinds of systems or tools or techniques that we're going to use. So um, I think the final thing to look at here is how it all affects us personally. What are the things that I do that are most satisfying for me that I get the most energy from? And what are the things that tend to steal energy from me? So an example of this scale would be I'm not a person who likes to spend a lot of time analyzing data. It's interesting because I love to look at data that somebody else has analyzed. And I can analyze data for maybe a half hour or an hour, or maybe at best two hours. And then I got to get up and walk away because it just drains my energy, not because I don't value it, but because I don't enjoy doing that work myself. So I really appreciate somebody else who actually gets energized by doing that kind of work. So that's the last thing is what's the kind of what, what, what kind of work do you enjoy doing and what are the right systems, tools, and techniques for that kind of work? And then how can I take the work that I don't enjoy that steals my energy and find a way for somebody who does enjoy that work to help me and then for me to help them as well? So if we don't, th if we don't sort through these questions first, then we start building systems, tools, techniques that are not necessarily going to solve our problem because we don't have a deep enough understanding of all those different moving parts that we have to work with. I think it's important to remember, I'm always reminding myself of this when it comes to this topic, that if I'm not hyper intentional and focused in this area, somebody else will step in and fill it in for me. And that's not a place that I want to be. And it's so interesting. There's so many different parts of what helps us discover and pursue our greatest potential that this idea of how do I get more done in less time and not just do it in a formulaic way, but to do it in a creative, insightful, um, really evolving way is a big part. It plays a big role in us getting further down that path of our, our greatest potential. So we have covered a lot for our listeners today. I have a feeling that this discussion can continue into the future. I think probably so, yeah. I'd like to talk more about how do we develop a sense of priority about what matters most how, for us? How do we decide what matters most to us? 
And then how do we get the support and agreement from others about our priorities? And then how do we renegotiate these priorities when things change? Something new happens and we have to go back and rethink things. And then finally, um, how do we think about getting more done in less time in the different time frames that I mentioned earlier? There are very practical techniques, tools, and systems that we can think about for getting more done in less time each day or week or month or quarter or year and so on. So I'd like to have more conversations about that. Fantastic. And to summarize today. Yeah. Okay. So um, most people would like to get more done in less time. Most people have not reached this level of satisfaction. And to do this, we have to understand the three causes, the noise around us, the busy world around us, our internal battles or obstacles that we need to overcome, and then learn new ways of managing our time and energy through systems and tools and techniques. And to do this well, it takes, it takes effort, it takes time. We need to reflect, we need to prioritize and negotiate, and then we need to find the right systems that will serve what it is that we want to get done within a variety of different time frames. This is a fantastic uh, conversation. I look forward to tweaking and using it to, for a tune-up in my life. So thank you for that, Ron Price. I'll remind folks that the podcast is based on the book, The Complete Leader by Ron Price and Randy Lisk. Uh, the podcast is built to be a companion to this book as you go through and read and learn more about the 25 uh, specific areas of leadership. There are podcast topics, dive in deeper. The podcast definitely stands on its own, but when you um, go through, read the book, and then listen to the podcast episodes that correlate with it, you get really deep and uh, it will help further your thinking in these areas as uh, you seek excellence in becoming a more complete leader. So the website where you can find more is thecompleteleader.org. You can find more about Ron and his practice and what he does at price-associates.com. You can also reach out to Ron via email. Now that you've only got 23 emails left in the inbox, you'll, you're, you're ready for some more. Ron, Ron at price-associates.com is the email address. And while you are out there with fingers on the keyboard, if you would do us a big favor on your phone, wherever you listen to podcasts, if you're watching this, um, make sure to rate and review the podcast. We really appreciate that. Hopefully we have earned that five-star rating from you and just a sentence or two about how you're going to put this to work in your life on your leadership journey it would be most appreciated. It helps push up this content in the search rankings and um, as folks are out looking for leadership material on podcasts and on video. So thecompleteleader.org is the website. This is the Complete Leader Podcast, everything you need to become a high-performing leader. Thanks for listening to the Complete Leader Podcast. Find more online, thecompleteleader.org.